Hello all. I am reiterating the z-scores concept. This is very important, okay? Because we want to find out relatively how far any point in any distribution is away from the mean when measured in standard deviation. We already know that standard deviation is the average distance of any point in any distribution, okay? So um, the z-scores is very important co the concept because it enables us to compare two different scores in two different distributions. Sort of same comparing apples and oranges. Also, z-scores are very important to understand before we move on to the probability section, you know, of the um, of the course. So let's start with another example of z-scores. Let's say that you go and meet your two friends. Um, both of them have taken a test in two different subjects and they both got the same score of 60. So let's say that uh, friend number one got 60 in stat and friend number two got 60 points in math. Okay? Although they have the same score, they are not really in the same emotional state. The guy who got 60 in statistics is sort of happy, while the guy who got 60 in math is sad. Why? Because we need to know something else about the distribution in order to assess um, these, these two um, particular scores, okay? So now that I brought in these two um, bell-shaped curve distributions, I'm going to show you uh, what's going on here. This is the math distribution, and this is the statistics distribution. The other two values that we really need to know in order to make sense of these two data uh, points that we have, or these two scores, 60 each, are the mean, which in the case of statistics is 50, and the mean of the test scores in math, which is 75. Also, one other important value is the standard deviation uh, of these two distributions, which in this case is 10. Okay, because these two distributions look the same, they have the same exact standard deviation because uh, we can see that these two distributions are um, uh, exactly the same in terms of their width around the mean. Okay. So now, intuitively, you understand, right, that the, um, your friend who got 16 statistics is happy because his score is somewhere over here, okay? So this is 60. That's above the mean, while your friend who got 60 in math, you can see that that score is somewhere over here, okay? So that's 60. That is below 75, which is the mean of the math distribution. Okay, so now this is just an intuitive uh, assessment of these two different data scores. So next step is to quantify these two places in each respective distribution. The 60 in the statistics and the 60 in the math distribution. Although we don't have to draw a picture, it would be really great that we see uh, what's going on in these two distributions. So to quantify these two places, we will do that with the z-score. The z-score formula is equal to the value or the score minus the mean of that distribution over the standard deviation. Okay. So in the statistics test, okay, we will just place the numbers here. The x is 60 minus the mean is 50 over standard deviation, which is 10. And that's going to be 10 over 10. That's going to be plus 1.00. So that is now one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so this is going to be one standard deviation above the mean. What about 60 in the math 
of distribution. The z-score of, let me say, zn is going to be x minus x bar from math over standard deviation from math. And that's going to be 60 minus 75. That's the mean of the math scores over 10 because the standard deviation is the same. That's going to be minus 15 over 10 equals minus 1.50. So what does that mean? That means that the 60, the score of 60 in the math test score distribution is below the mean, one and a half standard deviations below the mean. That's why you have that uh, minus sign there. So we understand this now. Let's say that another friend ran across uh, the hall coming towards you three, and she says that she has gotten a score of 84 in the statistics test. How does she fail? Where does she place her score in the, in the distribution? Let's do the z-score again. z equals 84 now, which is the x minus 50, because she has it in the math, in the statistics test, over 10. It's going to be 34 over 10, so the z-score here will be plus 3.40. Plus 3.40 means that this score of 84 is going to be placed somewhere over here. That's 84, but in relation to the standard deviation, this score is 3.4 standard deviations above the mean. 3.4 standard deviations above the mean. So this is now a young, bright student, okay? Because more than three standard deviations above the mean in a normal distribution would be that she is placed above 99.7%. Now, um, here's another thing that you probably did not know. When instructors reevaluate the, the scores that they give their students, they talk about curving the scores. Okay? Curve scores. Curving scores means that they do not now give you a score based on whatever total points they have placed, such as 100, but they reevaluate the scores based on the mean of the test. So if the mean is smaller, then they give you a higher grade. If the mean is higher, Okay, then it's harder for you to get a higher grade because then uh, the level of, you know, on average of students is, is really high. Okay, so that is curving the scores. When the scores, each individual scores, each score is evaluated based on the mean. Okay? So here are a few things that we learned here. One. The z-score can be a positive or a negative value. Positive score will be on the right of the mean or above the mean, while the negative score will be any value to the left of the mean or below the mean. Okay, so this is negative and this is positive. The second thing is that the mean of z scores is always equals to zero. So this mean right here is zero. And the third is that the standard deviation of z distribution will always be equal to one. So a normal distribution now, normal distribution will have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Okay, let me bring in another example. 
you remember the uh, the example with uh, eight people, eight students that we had and their respective heights. Let's say that now, in, uh, in addition to the height variable, we'll also have the weight variable, the weight of each of these uh, eight students. Okay, so we have the mean of the height here, and then we have the mean of the weight. Okay, so on average, everybody is 64.38 inches tall and 141 pounds heavy. Okay, also we do have the standard deviation of the weight and we have the standard deviation of the... Okay, so let's uh, <coughs> get more familiar with these data. So what does that mean? The height standard deviation, the weight standard deviation, and the uh, height mean and height weight. We would say that one standard deviation above the mean above the mean we would have 70.185 inches okay so if it's and how do, did we get that we got that by adding 64.38 which is the mean plus one standard deviation 5.805 right so we added this to that or vice versa, standard deviation to the mean. Okay, or one standard deviation above um, weight mean would have 141 plus 25.066, and that's going to be 166.066. So that's going to be one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, below the mean would have 64.38 minus 5.805 and would have 58.58. Okay, and so and so on and so on. Okay. But now the question is that we have a person or observation. Let's say his name is Jim. Okay. That is seven inches above the mean. Also, we have another person called Adele, and she is seven pounds above the mean. Okay? So these two people now have the same exact value above the mean. Alright, but do they? have the exact same um, score. Okay, again, intuitively, you would say no. Okay, you would say no, because 64.38 plus 7 is not equal to 141 plus 7. So these are two different scores. Like I said, apples and oranges, height and weight is the same thing. You cannot really compare inches and pounds. But how do we compare these uh, two scores now? Jim seven inches taller than the mean and Adele seven pounds heavier than the mean. That's where the z-score comes really, really handy. Okay, so now we have Jim here in the height distribution and we have Adele here in the weight distribution. Okay, so how do these now um, fare in terms of their respective height and weight okay, uh, compared to the standard deviation of the distribution in which they are in? Okay, so what we can do here, we can use the z-score, which is x minus x bar over standard deviation. And the z-score for Jim would be okay, uh, the value of 7 okay above the mean will give us 71.38 minus the mean 64.38 divided by the standard deviation which is 5.805 and the standard deviation for Jim right will be 1.21 so this that's plus right so that will 
bring him on this side of the mean and will tell us that this is 1.21 standard deviation above the mean. Okay? Let's compare now the standard deviation or the z-score for Adele. So z-score for Adele would be 7, okay, uh, which is 7 pounds above 141, so that's going to be 148 minus the mean 141 over the standard deviation of weight, which is 25.066, and that will give us a z-score of 0 0.28. Okay, so this is a plus, again, this is an, a positive uh, z-score, so that means that this is right here, okay, right over here, okay, on this side, on the uh, right side of the mean, which is a positive z-score. But this will tell us that the z-score of Adele shows us that Adele is only 0 0.28 standard deviations above the mean. So compare this 0 0.28 with uh, 1.21, okay? Although they have the same number, the same value, 7, above the mean, Jim is placed one and a half, almost 1.5 standard deviations above the mean, while Adele is placed only just a little bit above the mean, okay? So in terms of where these two values are placed in the distribution, right? The z-score gives us a better visu visualization of these two scores. <clears throat> Let's go over again the concepts of the normal distribution. Okay, we said that 68% of the data, everything that's in between here, okay, falls between one standard deviation, okay? One standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. So that will be one Z. This is minus one Z, okay? Ninety-five percent of all data will fall within two standard deviations. So everything right over here, okay? 2z and minus 2z, okay? And 99.7% of data fall between three standard deviations. So it's this data right over here, okay? 3z and minus 3z, okay? So we understand that. The good thing about knowing the z-score is that in probability we're going to talk about it and really easily find out where a score is placed while knowing the z-score okay in what percentile of this distribution a score is placed when we know it's z okay uh, imagine that this distribution is 100 percent one of the things that you really need to understand is that the mean divides the distribution in two equal parts. So this part will be 50% and this other part will be 50%. Okay, because the distribution that is normal is also symmetric. So the mean Z with a standard deviation of 1, okay, mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1 will always have a symmetric bell-shaped curve and that will divide that into two equal parts okay we're going to talk about probability again uh, soon in chapter four but the z-score uh, is very very important to understand so please go back to the textbook and uh, study it if not uh, look at the um, this podcast as as many times as you can until you understand the z-score uh, relatively Good. Okay. Have fun. Bye.